Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 38 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Uh, as you can see, I'm hanging out up here on top of my little control tower thing for uh, my different farms. I recently turned off my tree farm control. I basically was overloaded on uh, wood and saplings, and I decided, alright, I'm just going to hold off on that for a little bit. I might start sending them both down the uh, EMC route to get antimatter relayed. And I also have my rubber tree farm off. Um, and I did just turn on my peat bog because I was not running low on peat, but I didn't have a huge surplus either. So I decided let's turn the peat bog on, let it process that entire line of peat that I had sitting there. Uh, you could have seen it just a moment ago cycling through, but of course it got dark out as soon as I started recording. So uh, yeah, I'm going to basically let this peat bog finish up. You can see it just clearing its way through here. Picking up the last of the peat and uh, depositing some more bog earth all along looking good so far. Um, basically going to let this bog earth resupply itself and then turn this lever off again. Um, so just coming in to check on a couple things. I would hopefully like to get to that um, underwater un underground room that I had planned a little bit ago through my staircase and uh, maybe a couple other things this episode. So let me wait for this little bog earth thing to get finished laying down and I'll be back in a few minutes to get started on today's episode. Another thing that I'm doing over here in my apiary is I have an unwary queen. You can see it's currently the unwary cultivated hybrid, and I've got uh, about eight cultivated drones sitting down here. The purpose of this is that when this unwary queen dies off and becomes a princess, the unwary cultivated hybrid princess will land in the top slot here, and because the cultivated drones are already in the bottom, it'll automatically breed with cultivated drones. I'm working my way back down to the cultivated chain because uh, I need cultivated to get the next type of bee that I want to get going. But I'll come back to that in a little bit because uh sitting there and watching that bee die might be uh, a little boring let's go check on our build craft room plenty of fuel hanging out in my engines i recently refilled them almost running out of my last bit of fuel and then i can start working on some biofuel got plenty of that stuff to work with um so that's looking pretty sharp and uh i want to go check out my probably my equivalent exchange stuff over here oh by the way i do want to look at my sorting or my crafting bench stuff Somebody mentioned to me, about 100 or 200 people probably posted, saying that uh, I already have batteries in this table of uh, auto crafting stuff. And I'll be honest with you guys, I had no idea I had batteries in here. I don't even remember what the purpose of having batteries in here was for. Do you guys remember why I have batteries in here already? I really don't. What did I put batteries in here for? Machine blocks. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I guess I did have rechargeable batteries. Neat. I don't remember why I made batteries, but I guess I did. Cool. Why did I make batteries? I don't even remember. That's how bad I am. So let's go find the battery that I just created. Knock that guy off. Don't need him to exist anymore. Get this thing back. Collect all this uh, resource junk. I'm just going to store these resources right in here. I'll probably just throw this guy in there. Uh, this thing can sit in there. And then I'll go put away all the other junk that I got. I'll even leave my crafting logistics pipe in there. Just so that, uh, you know, next time I'm ready to go create an auto crafting system, things will be better. So my bad on not realizing I had already taught my crafting system about batteries. How much of a noob am I? <laughs> oh well, what can I say? Anyway, so let's get to playing a little bit. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, look at all this yummy, delicious, awesome EMC that we've got. Klein Star Dry, nice and fully charged. I want to build an item that is more for fun than anything else. It's something that I've really been looking forward to. Uh, probably one of the coolest equivalent exchange items out there. Uh, I'm going to steal a couple pieces of red matter here. Straight out of my Klein Star Dry. Uh, just go ahead and recharge this guy for a minute. And why don't I get this recipe ready to roll and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna combine my red matter with my gem of eternal density. Why not? This guy, plus my black hole band, plus a couple pieces of red matter. I guess it's a shaped recipe, or maybe this thing being on is a problem. Let's try turning that guy off. Him being on versus off might be an issue. Hey, there we go. I got my void ring. Woot. Gotta love this thing. Oh, this is the coolest item. Uh, void ring. Very cool. Not sure exactly where I want to put him. Maybe I want to put him on slot four. That might be a nice spot for him to hang out. Boom. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this guy. Uh, first off, you can turn him on and off with G, as you would expect. 
Um, so let's go grab some more cobble here. Bum, 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 bum. Just gonna grab a stack. Uh, so if I do turn this guy on, you'll notice him condensing one stack of cobble for me. Uh, and there goes the other stack. It basically works just like the uh, Gem of Eternal Density, which makes sense as it was one of the required components of the Void Ring. And it also works like a black hole band in that uh, I'll even hold on to this stuff for a few minutes here. You got items all around you, turn it on, it sucks them up at the same time. So that is cool. Uh, it also works inside your bag, though it's a little bit buggy just like the black hole band is. Um, it's one of the little minor bugs in Equivalent Exchange 2 right now. Now the really cool part about this, I don't think C does anything, nor does left or right click, but if you hit the R key on your keyboard, you teleport to wherever you're looking. That was not a video edit, that was me teleporting. And I get these little cool uh, Enderman particle effects all around me. So I can teleport right around, boom, right up to there. <laughs> how cool is that? And I can teleport right over to my ledge. As long as you have your mouse pointer, you know, pretty accurate. Let's go check on my quarry real quick. Boom, teleported to my quarry. Oh good, I found some water down there. All kinds of nifty stuff down on my quarry actually. I gotta check that out at some point. Let's teleport right over here, looking good. Yeah, can you see why I wanted this thing? Boom, right up to there. <laughs> nice. Um, gonna have a lot of fun with my Void Ring, I think. Just for the pure awesomeness of teleporting around. Nice. Um, so, got that guy. It's really gonna help me start exploring my world, actually. At some point, I might want to go grab a map. Like, just craft a vanilla map and just start looking around and checking stuff out. That might be a good plan. Uh, but maybe not this episode, maybe next one. Uh, let's go and see. Yeah, I don't want that thing on. Nor do I want this other stack of cobble. You can have that back. Sorting machine. Uh, let's go see what other kind of trouble we can get into. Uh, I do want to go check on my bees real quick, actually. And why don't I just go right over there like this? Ta-da! Teleported. Heh. <laughs> nice. I don't think you can teleport through glass. Yeah. Would be kind of maybe cool if you could teleport through glass, but oh well, what are you going to do? Uh, how's this guy done? Uh, my unwary, diligent drone, ready to breed them together. Still trying for that industrious, whatchamacallit, princess. Uh, unwary queen, okay, purebreded, nice. Uh, this guy, diligent, still working down. This is still alive, holy cow, those unwary queens are really unwary in that they never die. All right. Nice. So let's go pop down into our little room down here. Not sure if I'm going to do this this episode or not, but I do want to get started on the room that I'm going to have down here. Whoosh. Straight down. I mean, that's just fun. Uh, I should start working on this room a little bit, probably. Why don't I grab my destruction catalyst, charge it up a little bit, and start clearing out some space. Let's see, what do I got? I'm probably going to need to go, I don't even know how big I want this room to be, but it looks like it's uh, going to be decent sized. I definitely want it to be like, you know, kind of cool. And it's going to be dark for a few minutes while I clear this room out. And what I'm thinking I should probably do even is uh, probably consider just clipping the video at this point. You guys have all seen me clear out a cave in the past. I don't think you need to watch that kind of thing anymore. So I'll probably be back in just a few minutes once I've finished clearing this stuff out. I want to have a nice, tall, open roof. Not like too open, of course, but tall enough. Yeah, it's looking sharp. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Like I said, dark rooms, not fun. Be right back. All right, guys, looking pretty sharp in here. Nice and bright for the moment. Um, gonna be definitely doing something a little bit different with lighting in this room than a few torches on the wall but for now I need a way to get out of here um, what I have been doing is just activating my uh, wireless remote with my portal gun to get me back to my main base and I feel like that's probably a good approach to take but uh, maybe stick with the laser approach so maybe I want to do something just a little bit different here um, I haven't entirely planned out how I want this to work but what I'm thinking is maybe some kind of like door system here that I walk through and then a laser shoots me up and activates a portal that shoots me back into my house or something like that. I haven't entirely figured it out yet, like I said, um, but it's worth trying. So maybe I'll just do something like this. What if I grab my mining laser real quick here, make sure he's on like, uh, you know, normal mining mode and just boom, straight up. That'll probably be a good number. Um, 
And let's get ourselves something like this. What if I were to get... I should have in this green bag, maybe. And you can hear there's some zombies around me. I'm going to have to maybe at some point, probably off camera, figure out where all these zombies and sounds are coming from. Because I don't want to have to hear zombies all the time. But, uh, yeah, let's do something like this. I'm going to grab a couple more of these little ruby things. That should be good. And I can drill my way down here. Uh, now, I am going to have to quickly head back home. So let's do that real fast. And I can probably lower this guy and deposit this thing down here. Let's pop back to my house real quick. Let's drop off some of our junk that we've collected while hanging out down there. That should be cool. All right, uh, over here, I'm gonna go ahead and craft up another one of those teal lasers. So that's gonna be nice, cyan plus uh, ender pearl and I don't think I'll need the glowstone probably not if I do I'll just lower the ceiling a little bit so let's go with uh, maybe I'll even steal a diamond for this purpose okay so this laser will be another one of those things that pushes me real fast. I'm going to go with a plus five that should be a nice powerful laser and it's advanced so it'll be a push uh, let's head back down there. And I drilled into this spot right here so I can place this guy like so. Let's see what kind of speed we got on this guy. Do I have any nice little uh, redstone torches? I do. Does this get me to the ceiling? Boom, straight up to the top there. Perfect. Liking it. All right. Uh, let's do something like this to get out of here. And uh, what I'll do is be right back once I've got a finalized plan for this little deal. All right, hopefully I've got everything I need for this. But I'm going to pick up these things. I don't need them in my room anymore, and I might need them downstairs. But uh, let's zip through this hallway real quick. Whoosh. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I think, just to start off, um, at the very least, I need to... I'm thinking like a pressure plate right here, right? Um, but the problem with that is I want to make sure that this thing sends me up high enough. And I don't know if a pressure plate will. So what happens? Will I get to the top before the thing burns out? No, of course not. Uh, close, but not quite. So I need this thing to stay on for a few seconds longer. So I might need to make that with like an RS Norlatch or something. Um, maybe like right over here. Might be a good idea. Let's try. I think I still have one more hanging out in my chest. So, uh, no, I think I had it in the red bag, didn't I? Yes, there it is, RS Norlatch, woot. And I'm going to need some red alloy wiring, of course. And I can just run this guy like so to an RS Norlatch here with a screwdriver thingy. Where is that at? In my green bag, I believe. And what this will do is hopefully keep the thing on long enough for me to get up there. So let's see, if I hit this thing, now it needs to probably be this way. Hmm, don't like that. Okay, maybe I kind of do like that. Does that work for me? And what happens if I pulse something on this side? Yeah, it shuts it off. All right, that works. Why not? Uh, so this over here is going to be a wireless receiver on... Yeah, let's leave it frequency zero for now. That's going to work for me. Frequency zero, believe it or not. And you'll see why I'm doing it that way in a minute. You might have already figured out exactly why I'm going with frequency zero there. If you have, kudos to you. So stepping on the pressure plate keeps it on because the way the RS Norlatch works is this thing stays on on this side and that's keeping this light on. And then when frequency zero gets pulsed, which is, uh, let's do it right here with the thingy that I can't find in my inventory at the moment. There it is. Terrible at finding stuff in my inventory when I'm talking. There we go. So when zero gets pulsed, it shuts off the laser. So let's get up top real quick. I'm gonna grab my Swift Wolf's ring. And let's set up up here. I'm probably gonna wanna craft for myself another one of those laser combination thingies. So let's go ahead and do something like this. I'm probably gonna need two rubies. 
one for a laser, and we're going to use that laser tripwire thingy again. And one of these things, another sensor. Sweet. Um, I'll place down my, let's see, probably right here is where I'll want my laser to be. And right here, do I want my sensor? Maybe I want my laser over here. So I'll do my sensor on this side. And right here can be my laser. And of course, don't worry, I'll clean this mess up um, with all like the wall and whatnot in a bit. But just give me a few minutes here. Uh, what we're going to want to do is pretty much... I think I need another knot gate situation, don't I? Yeah, I should probably head back home and get a knot gate. Why don't I do that real quick? Alrighty, so I got my knot gate here. I'm just going to orient him like in whatever way makes sense. Yeah, that should work. I can get this thing out of here, out of the way. Cool. Let's get this thing off with a pulse of frequency zero. There we go. Cool. So this thing hooked up like so is emitting the redstone signal. Uh, that, pretty much what I want to have happen is as soon as I break the beam, you know, like if I did something like this, is this like backwards to what I want? Oh, right, I need to turn this thing on, don't I? Like I said, I'll clean this mess up in a minute. I want this laser to always be on, so I got my redstone torch ready for that. There we go. And then uh, let's... Okay, cool. So when the beam is broken, it emits a redstone signal. Perfect. Um, and that redstone signal I want to pulse on a wireless transmitter, frequency zero. Right? So when I break the beam, it's going to open my portal back home and turn off this, uh, you know, push thingy. So that should be cool. And then I've got a portal spawner here that I want to set up probably like so. Can I do that with uh, the, the blue color? So that might work. All I need to do really is get some red alloy wiring. I wonder if this will work now. See? <laughs> Look at that. That would be cool. So let's try it out real quick. What do you say? I don't know if this will work or not yet, but I think it will, right? So I'm just going to turn off everything, make sure there's no orange portal open already, and I'll step on this thing. Ah, uh, close. I might need a little bit of a closer thingy. Huh, why isn't zero opening back in my face? Let me go investigate that for a moment. I think it's because of the way this thing gets stuck if I don't hit this button. So let me try and resolve that real quick. Give me a minute off camera and then I'll show you guys what I wind up fixing. And uh, I just broke something, didn't I? I'll be back. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember what happens now. Um, if I pulse zero like this, it keeps the portal open. But if I manually reset it with uh, my portal gun like that, further pulses of zero do not work. See? Nothing happening until I come and manually reset it with the pressure plate switch. And then back to uh, pulses of zero work again. So that's just because I reset my portal gun back in my base. So let's try this again. I'm going to sneak down here. Hit my button. Everything's nice and reset, right? I think so. Get shot down here, shot over here. And then I'm going to go step on this pressure plate and go straight up. Eh, close. Hey, that kind of worked. Cool. I'm going to go play with that a little bit more, make sure everything's working smooth, and if it's not, I might just need to tweak the timing a little bit. Like, I might need to move that laser down a block or two, because I might be shooting up too fast for the uh, thing to work. So I'll be right back once I've tested this. All right, it works pretty well, but there's one minor problem, and I'll show it to you guys if I can trigger it to happen. It's not terribly hard to make happen. If I go too far forward here, I kind of hit my head on the ceiling rather than going through the uh, portal. So I think my remedy for that is to knock this portal off of here. If I can get up here without going through the 
portal. <laughs> All right, let me go back. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just knock this portal off of here, uh, place this block back down, and then I'm gonna place the portal horizontally like so. That way, hopefully, there won't be any kind of trickery. So let's try that. So it's simply a matter of walking into here and then poof, I'm back home. Look at that, that's kind of neat, I like that. Let's try that one more time just for the full effect, just to make sure everything's smooth. This is one of those things that you have to test a couple times because like every now and then you might hit it a funny way and it might not work, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but you know, so I just walk in here, hit the blue beam, and there I go, I'm hitting my head again. See, that's why you wanna like test it a couple times. Not bad, not bad. I might keep it just the way it is and uh, see if it really becomes a problem. Maybe I'll have to change it up a little bit. But for the most part, I think it's working. All right, and the last few steps I'm doing here are just to uh, kind of make sure this thing's a little bit neat and tidy. Um, just transmuting my way around, making sure everything looks kind of nice and clean. Uh, not bad looking, really. I don't think I can have a block right here. And hey, that's interesting. What is up with that? Weird for sure. I'll have to show that one to Aichun. Aichun. I'll pronounce his name right one of these days. All right, let me uh, mess around a little bit, make sure everything's nice and clean, and I'll be right back. And I think I fixed my portal by just changing what block it was on. I put it there instead of there, if that makes any sense to you guys. But it looks like my portal's behaving now. So let's try this one last time. Stepping through, shooting up, boom, back home. Ha, <laughs> I like it. Back in my apiary real quick. Checking my unweary purebred princess that I got the last combination with a diligent drone gets me an unweary diligent hybrid. Boo. Uh, also wanted to check out over here. I've got myself an unweary queen, which refuses to just become a purebred cultivated. Um, so I keep getting the unweary cultivated hybrid. I guess it's only really been one cycle, but still, it's been a while. And unweary is just live forever. Um, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Want to do a couple more things this episode. Well, this time I got a cultivated unweary hybrid. Sweet. I want to get that down to a purebred cultivated. Hey, sweet. Look at this. I got a purebred cultivated queen. Nice. I'm going to wait for her to die off and get my princess. I need to do some work. And as a matter of fact, guys, I just made a mess underneath my floor here because I wanted to turn off all my redstone engines. I have got just an absurd amount of resources here from my bees that I really don't need them running full blast anymore. I might do some more in the future, but for now, just like, look at all this. I've got tons of propolis. Uh, the strict, the st stringy combs are now um, the way you get propolis. That comes, uh, you have to put your stringy combs in your uh, centrifuge to get propolis now. Um, so I disabled this thing so it doesn't automatically refresh my breeds. So I'll get my uh, diligent princess and unweary princess and all that cool stuff going here. And then what I want to do is get my um, cultivated drones. While waiting for that guy to die off, or I guess that girl, I'm going to set up frequency zero receiving true, get out my little requester tool, and request myself, uh, I'm probably thinking some bronze I need, right? Uh, let's see, what's in here? I want a new apiary to take with me. Uh, I'm going to need four tin gears and some bronze, so let's do this. Uh, eight bronze, please. Where's the bronze at? There. No, it's brass. I need bronze, right? There's a difference. Kind of, sort of. Maybe a little bit. There it is. Bronze ingots. Eight of those things. I'm going to need four of you. And I'm going to need 16 tin. So where's that tin? Request that up. All right, beautiful. Grab our crafting table from our philosopher's stone. And I can just craft it up real fast. Bronze ingot. And uh, some tin here. And some glass get myself a brand new apiary to take with me. Let's check out our princess, hooray! So I'm gonna take my cultivated princess and my cultivated drones. Um, 
I guess they're pretty much the same. Uh, I did find out why these two guys are the same but don't stack. Um, when you update from the older version of Forestry to the newer version, the uh, item IDs changed a little bit. So even though they have the same names, they're different IDs. So what do I got in my inventory here? I got an apiary. I got some common drones with a cultivated princess and some uh, cultivated drones. And where am I going? Dun 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 to the nether. That's right, I'm taking these guys to the nether. Now, I haven't explored the nether all that much. If you guys were paying attention to my hotbar, you might have noticed that I brought my Vulcanite amulet with me. Probably a wise idea. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff to do down here in the nether. But the first thing I should probably do is set up a little bit of a house to live in, at least temporarily. So let's clear out some terrain. I'm probably going to need to grab out of my yellow bag here. And look at there's already a gas attacking me. How dare you. But I'm going to grab my mercurial eye. That's cool. Look at him shooting me out. All right. I'm going to deal with this gas. I should have probably gotten the uh, item that hooks me up with uh, arrows. But oh well. I have my mining laser, don't I? Yeah, I do. What's up, mining laser? I think it's in my green bag. That's where I left it. If you put this guy on long range mode, you just have to make sure your lasers hit him before he gets out of the way. Got you, buddy. And I got a gas tier. Nice. All right, let's see if I can uh, build a little home to live in. And oh, look, he knocked out my portal. That might be a problem in a minute here. Yes, it might be. I am going to have to figure out how to make some flint and tinder. I don't think I brought any with me. So give me a minute and let me think through this problem. Remember I said you should always bring flint and tinder with you into the nether? And I think even some people commented and say, what do you need that for, Direwolf? Uh, this is what you need it for. It's the situation where you're in the nether and you have a problem. So let me uh, think for a moment how I'm going to resolve that. Well, I guess the first thing I should do before I'm able to really resolve this anyway is just clear out some area here to live in and call home. Might as well build this home now and then I'll figure out how to get out of the nether in a moment. Darn ghasts. Do not like those guys. So that'll probably work for now. I'm um, going to need to lay down this stuff. I have some ideas on Flint and Tinder. Look at him sneaking right up on me. That's right, buddy. You got nothing on Direwolf. All right, let's get this thing going in creation mode. And I'm using smooth stone. That might be a little bit high. Don't need a terribly large area. That's probably good. And I'll be back in just a moment or two once I've uh, made a nice little house to live in here. Alright, definitely the first step here is to start compressing down items using my void ring because my inventory is a little bit crazy. Um, now, how am I going to get flint? I have a pretty good idea on how to get steel at the very least. Uh, that should be pretty easy. I can just open up this guy, um, go into creation mode. And then just clear this stuff away to get cobblestone back. And once I've got a healthy amount of cobblestone, I should be able to compress that down to iron. So let me see if I can figure out how to get this going. All right, well, I'm getting myself a door here. I compressed some uh, cobblestone down into some iron, and since I need to go explore this nether area anyway, it's probably a good point to start doing that. What I'm going to do is fly around, and uh, as you guys probably know, there is gravel in the nether sometimes. And hey, look, there's even a portal here. Nice. <laughs> I must have left my portal gun activated last time I went playing around. So no idea where that would have gone to. So maybe I should just fly around for a little bit in the nether, hoping that I can find my way back. Maybe it would be even a good idea if I put down a uh, 
whatchamacallit in here. Let's see. I don't think I have the resources to craft a uh, portal thingy, but I might as well just place an orange portal here, and then I can get back in a little bit. So this is me flying around my netherworld looking for some gravel, because like a noob, I forgot to bring uh, flint and tinder down with me. Um, hopefully I'll find some, and it won't be too hard. But since I need to explore this place anyway to find a nether fortress. So I'm probably gonna do a little bit of this off camera. What's down here? Ooh, is this gravel by chance? It just might be. Nice. So all I gotta do here is, yes, flint. Nice, nice, nice. Let's get out of here. I can just do this if I wanted to. There we go. Back home. So I was able to compress my uh, iron ingots into flint. There we go, flint and steel. See? Always bring one of these with you so you can get out of the nether. Very important job. Um, so I'll be back in a minute here. I want to grab a couple things out of my main base before I come back. Wow, really? I had flint and steel in here the whole time? <laughs> I guess I had some in my green bag. Oh well. But hey, it was still an adventure, wasn't it? I guess that's a lesson in paying attention to what's in your bags and remembering to bring stuff with you. Anyway, what I want to do is grab myself a diamond. Do I need one or two? I think two. Uh, four of these guys. And an ender pearl. You guys probably saw that dime, that uh, flint and steel in my green bag when I had it open earlier. And was like, dude, direwolf, you noob, you already have one. You're probably yelling at me the whole time and I couldn't hear you. Oh well. So I'm getting one of these, and I'm also going to get a wireless receiver. I think I've got one in my bags already that I didn't use a few minutes ago. There we go. Receiver. That should be cool. Um, yeah, I think that works. So let's try setting this up back in this nether fortress area here. Uh, I do need to find a nether fortress, like I was saying, because I want to get some nether wart, and I want to find a blaze spawner. would even be cooler. And, uh, who knows what else. And this is getting to be a bit of a long episode, I know. So, uh, I'm probably gonna have to wrap up here pretty soon, guys. But hopefully I'll be able to get this going in a moment. Uh, let's get this thing down. I'm gonna set this guy to frequency 1,000. Why not? Um, I think you can share frequencies between the main world and the nether. But, uh, just to be safe, I'm not gonna. So let's make this guy an orange color. I'll get out my blue portal gun real quick. And if I set this to frequency 1,000, do I need a thingy in there if I'm going to be fast enough? Nope. It lasts long enough for me to run through. So uh, that'll work. I'll just put down my blue portal, pulse that real quick, and I don't have to set up that complicated latch system there. So that should work out just fine. Uh, but just in case, I'm going to keep the orange portal up. And maybe go look around for another fortress real quick and see if I get any kind of luck. And what is this? Do my eyes deceive me? No, they do not. I found another fortress already. Nice. Uh, I just kind of headed off in this direction from my main base. Let's see. I'm just going to, you know, teleport my way back. Boom. Right over here. I think my base that I spawned in is right over in this direction. Is that true? Or am I completely out of my mind? Now look. See? There's my base, right? So, uh, there's my base. I went off in this direction. Just traveling right along here. Used my uh, little void ring here to help me teleport a little bit faster along the lines. And uh, it really wasn't a far way away. I might even get the uh, coordinates for you guys if you want. There we go. Sweet. So now hopefully I can go find some nether wart. And uh, maybe even some blaze spawners. I did find a blaze spawner here, so that's cool. And uh, they die pretty quickly when you've got the nano saber going on, so that's nice to see. Get over here, buddy. Give me your blaze rods. That's what I want. Uh, looking for some nether wart still real quick. And then I'm probably going to wrap up once I find it, but I've got some plans coming up. Don't worry. Hey, Woot, just found some nether wart. Awesome. I'm going to harvest some of this stuff here. Just take, like, one side worth of it. Nice. I still got this other side here. And another blaze guy attacking me. Die, blaze spawn. I uh, did want to mention to you guys, uh, I think I learned this in my last series. Um, when these guys are on fire is the best time to kill them because they have a better chance of dropping their uh, blaze rods if they're on fire. 
So, uh, little tip. Alright, let's get out of here and find my way back to my main base now that I've got these things. Alright, got my nether wart, got my blaze rods. I think it's a good wrapping up point. Uh, I will come back right away in episode 38. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe 39. I don't know. What episode was this again? Yeah, this one was 38. So uh, I'm going to sign off now and come back shortly in episode 39 to uh, finish up my expedition in the nether here. There's a couple other things I want to do uh, before I leave the nether. And uh, I'll be back. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode 38 of Direwolf 20's Let's Play. Take it easy.